Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern Health Span. In 2020, a groundbreaking pre release paper, co authored by Dr. Steve Horvath and Harold Katcher, revealed astonishing re rejuvenation results in rats. These findings showcase a remarkable over 50% reduction in epigenetic age and significant improvements in various blood markers. While the study was formally published in a peer-reviewed journal in October 2023, subsequent research on this promising intervention has been surprisingly limited, with the exception of a lifespan study. However, developments are on the horizon. A team in Brazil is currently undertaking efforts to replicate and expand on Dr. Katcher's work. To provide you with essential background information, before my upcoming interview with the researchers at this Brazilian Institute, I am creating this video to give an overview of Dr. Katcher's initial findings. Let's delve into Dr. Katcher's research, which was published in Geroscience in October 2023. The study was entitled Reversal of Biological Age in Multiple Rat Organs by Young Porcine Plasma Fraction and it demonstrated a significant reduction in biological age in rats treated with a specific fraction of young pig plasma. The main author is Dr. Katcher. Dr. Steve Horvath, a renowned expert in epigenetic clocks, played a crucial role in this study. His team assessed the biological age of the animals, providing support for the remarkable findings. We've previously explored this research in greater detail. For a comprehensive overview, I've included a link to a previous video. In this presentation, we'll focus on a quick review of the key highlights. For those seeking deeper insights, please watch our previous interviews with Dr. Katcher, which I've also linked to above. In this experiment, exosomes extracted from the blood of young pigs were administered to aged rats. These exosomes were injected with the goal of observing their impact on the animal's epigenetic clocks. The treatment regimen involved two injections, one at the study start and the other on the 95th day. Due to the required dosage, each injection was delivered over a period of four days. Six epigenetic clocks were validated for rats, a pan tissue clock, and one for the brain, liver, and blood, and two which applied to both human and rat tissue. The treatment more than half the epigenetic age in blood, heart, and liver, while having a significant but less pronounced effect in the hypothalamus, a part of the brain. As well as checking the epigenetic age, they also measured many biomarkers in the blood, markers of inflammation and cognitive ability, all of which showed positive results. So let's quickly go through the results. Here is the output from one of the epigenetic clocks, the pan tissue clock. The graphs are for blood, liver, heart, and the hypothalamus, from left to right. The first bar is the epigenetic age for the old controls, the second bar that for the young, the young rats, and the last bar for that for the treated animals. For the blood, liver, and heart, there is an improvement of over 50%, bringing the results back to almost the same as the young rats. The last graph for the hypothalamus showed a less marked improvement, but the difference is still significant. And as we will see, learning in the rats did improve. I have shown the results of only one clock for brevity, but the other clocks were similar. These are a set of graphs from the blood markers, such as HDL, triglycerides, cholesterol, and glucose, taken at 30 day intervals. These normally get worse with age, which is what we see in the old rats shown in red. Meanwhile, the treated rats in yellow move closer to the young controls in blue over time after the injection. This shows that all the markers in the blood were moving towards a more youthful profile. The outlook is similar for markers of chronic inflammation, a key hallmark of aging. Interleukin-6 and TNF-alpha both decreased in the treated group, while NRF2 increased. These graphs are showing the latency in the barnes maze test which is a measure of how well a rat can learn, with lower latency being better. So although the epigenetic age change was less in the hypothalamus than other tissues, they did see an improvement in learning itself. This study demonstrated remarkable improvements in aged rats, providing a compelling proof of concept. However, replication effort have been limited 
with no successful reproduction in rats by other teams or in larger mammals. Dr. Katcher founded Uven Research to further his work, but he is no longer affiliated with the company. While other research groups have explored the rejuvenative potential of factors derived from young blood, such as Dr. Hans Kirsted's work with human embryonic stem cell secretome and the Cedar sinai team's use of extracellular vesicles in rats, a cross-species approach like Dr. Katcher's remains largely unexplored. A significant advantage of Dr. Katcher's method is the utilization of readily available and cost-effective source of exosomes, the blood of young pigs. As these animals are raised for food production, their blood is typically discarded, making this approach potentially more accessible and scalable. Encouragingly, a team in Brazil has now taken up the challenge of replicating and expanding upon Dr. Katcher's pioneering research. The team have set up a science, technology and innovation institute in Brazil called the Rejuvenation Science Institute. The initials are ICR because the original name is in Portuguese. They have started on the first study and released it as a preprint of the experiment. Here is the study, the feasibility of intravenous injections of pig plasma extracellular particles into rats, an acute study. Nicholas and Nina are the founders of the Institute and led the study. We will be talking with both of them shortly about this study and their plans for moving this line of research forward. I will release the video as soon as possible. The team are working with the cooperation from Professor Mori of the University of Campinas. Note that this is a preprint and was not being peer reviewed. However, in this case, I don't think that is very important as it's really a test to show the successful application of Dr. Katcher's method. Here is what they did. They used extracellular vesicles from young adult pigs to inject into rats. One of the outcomes that might be expected from this is an increase in inflammation, as the factors from the pig's blood may contain proteins which are foreign to rats, causing a rejection reaction. The trial was to compare the reaction to injecting pig plasma extracellular particles in sprayed dory rats to injecting a sterile saline solution in terms of inflammation and impact on organs. The results were negative, which is what was hoped for with no immunological reaction. And after nine days, the organs showed no signs of toxicity. So the process was successful. The funding was provided by HEALS, the same organization which provided the original funding for Harold Catcher's experiment back in 2020. And the authors declare that they have no conflicts of interest. Dr. Catcher's initial findings were truly groundbreaking surpassing previous results in terms of reversing epigenetic age and improving key biomarkers. It's unfortunate that subsequent research in this area has been somewhat limited. However, I am optimistic about the work being conducted by the team in Brazil. Nicholas has previously collaborated with Dr. Katcher. Please stay tuned for my upcoming interview with Nicholas and Nina, where I will delve deeper into the plans for the future research and the potential implications of their work. Thank you for your attention. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon. <laughs>